We have a special session coming up. It's the last session of the day. And it's on the future of media training. But also, it's to be about something, a very unique experience that you'll have this evening. We have a Pincho Bar tour lined up for you. To my left is the part of Yecha basically the old town. The old town is, all I can say, it's a magical place. I don't know how to quite put it, but when you're there, you're going around, you have this magical feeling, and you'll experience it this evening. So, you'll hear the word pinchos. How many people here don't know what pinchos are? Okay, we see a few hands. It's kind of like tapas but slightly different. You don't want to get yourself in trouble saying it's the same, but it's, you get the idea in general. The part of Yecha has the highest density of pincho bars in the world, everything very, very close together. There is, however, local legend that you probably saw there's, there's this big, if you walked around there, there's this big courtyard with numbers all lined up around it, where they used to do bullfights. And local legend is that at certain times of the day, a door magically appears. And through that door, you find the pincho bar in purgatory, between present and future. Really? Think Harry Potter, platform nine and three quarters. It's kind of like that. And people that wind up in this bar, sometimes it's not so easy to leave, but you have an excellent platform to discuss the future of things. So we might find that some of our ICOM delegates end up there. We'll see. So I'll leave you to that. Enjoy it. Use the microphones, you old fools. Old fools, the microphones weren't on before because we're old fools, yeah, but they are now. We got them. So here we are, Muppet time. We're vamping until they get that darn thing open. Does anyone really know what they've been talking about today on the stage, do you think? I don't know. Well, yeah. what's your thoughts? Does anyone really know what they've been talking about on the stage? I want to get the bar open. I heard Pinto Bar. I heard there was gin. Well, soon, apparently, the curtain will rise. There we go. Okay. I heard they have real good gin here. What kind of gin? I don't care. Just send it up. Uh, data science, huh? Outstanding, outstanding. Hey, those kind of... yeah, let's just make some make some space here, huh? So, uh, yeah, I obviously, uh, Joe, I, I know you. We, we, we do a little bit of work together, right? But, uh, uh, with, uh, you, don't, you don't do anything for me. Like, hey, who are, who are you guys? I'm sorry. We didn't really get a chance to meet. Phil McCauley, Quadcast. Quadcast, okay. Hey, how you doing? Uh, Nathan Woodman, iPhone web. Nice to meet you, Nathan. Hey, so cool. New York Times. New York Times. Oh, outstanding publication, huh? How about that? So uh, this has been an amazing week already, right? It's outstanding. You guys have been hanging out at the bar already, I think? We have, yeah. yeah. We've, we've been negotiating like who owns data. Is it the, is the agency should really own data? Or is it the, is it the company, the brand that should really do it? Well, there's been, a lot, I mean, there's been a lot of conversation about that. Uh, man, I mean... 
I'm a I'm a marketer, so my mind's just blown this week. All the all the conversations I've heard about, uh, you know, the basically the future of media. This 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 whole data world. Uh, it's really changing how we think about media trading, and uh, my mind's just kind of blown away. Like, where do I go? I go back home, and and then got to talk to our organization about how we set things up and what the strategy is going to be. I uh, I'm trying to figure it all out. So, so we've got a really diverse group of guys here. I'd love to hear some perspectives. What you guys think is uh, is the world changing? Every day. Every. Um, the rise of, I think. Well, the tell use me about of it here. First Smart data. data agency. <laughs> What's changing? Enough. What? Enough. Huh? Enough All right. So no, I did, it's changing every day. Star Lord. Star Lord. <laughs> it's changing every day. Uh, a lot of the clients are lighting up their first party data sets, sales data sets, um, creating new currency, new audiences. It's all changing. Yeah. Uh, well, and you guys are clearly creating value for your clients, I assume. <laughs> Ultimately, at the end of the day, if we're not, we're not going to be any business anymore. Yeah, I mean, for us, it's just about, you know, how do I get the most out of every dollar I spend? You think about marketers are under more pressure every day, every year. Uh, you know, guys like Michael want me to spend more on, on their, their inventory, but uh, I'm not always sure what I'm buying, what I get. You guys heard some people talk about viewability today and transparency. Some guy was up here actually said transparency didn't matter. I can believe that. Man, what do, you, do you think transparency matters, Michael? Of course. I, 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 I advocate transparency. I hope as the world becomes more transparent that well-known, well-lit uh, entities like the New York Times uh, will get more of a share of the dollars that come in, of course. Um, again, we even, you know, in, in a hardcore audience targeting world, uh, I, think, uh, I think there is a room for environment and contextual. So uh, uh, I think they coexist, and I'm excited. Um, especially year after year as we meet, I think the worlds of old-fashioned or, or traditional direct and programmatic are all coming together. Yeah. Aaron, you already said you, know, you said you have an objective, right? You I do. I have an objective, yes. Your objective as a company is to maximize uh, every dollar that you spend, right? Yeah. Michael's objective as a company is to maximize his yield, right? Everybody here, we're at this table in this space, every company has their own objective and their own specific case that they're trying to, that they're trying to solve for. But ultimately, if you think about this space, you know, where we are in programmatic and ad trading, we're just a whole bunch of competing objectives that all need to normalize and kind of come, into, right, mm. to come into one into mm. one environment where we can actually trade with each other. Right? Okay. So I think there's a lot of, around this table, I think that there's actually a lot of conflict. Wow. Right? So, <laughs> so we, we have competing we, objectives? We compete. I haven't thought about that way. Day. But, you know, uh, I think, I think um, you know, we tend to forget in ad tech what, what we're all doing. And we're doing advertising. Um, primarily, a lot of the advertising comes into two buckets. Is it brand advertising with demographs or is it some kind of performance outcome? And, you know, we've muddled ourselves up with click-through engagement metrics, this, that, and the other. I mean, if you're targeting demographs, it's the same as any other media. You look at the composition of the audience that you've served to okay. and what's the effect of yeah. cost per thousand of that. And the other thing we've been missing is, is using proper attribution solutions. Last ad seeing click to convert doesn't show you anything. You know, we've had Abacus, Abacus talking about a really good methodology of understanding how cost-effective advertising is. We have to start using it. Well, well, hey, congratulations to those guys, right? Another big winner. Uh, you weren't the only winner around here, right? Uh, so, but, I mean, you, you hit on it, okay? Yeah. There's technology everywhere. I am bombarded every day by people wanting to get on my calendar telling me about their latest tech and the latest data we've got the best data and sometimes my agency's trying to steer me in one direction and sometimes joe's calling me up trying to steer me in another direction and you know i think what we're trying to figure out is do we have competing objectives with any of these with any of these players or or is there real value in, in, in bringing it all together and who's got my best interest in mind I, I mean, I don't know. Should I be should I be building things myself? Well, that's that, 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 my opinion on that would be yes. But there's a, there are certain things that you have to consider, right? Like you said, the <clears throat> as a brand and as an advertiser, you're trying to maximize your objectives. You want to protect your data. You want to maximize your revenue, right? Okay. And you with know, you, <clears throat> with a uh, with an agency, they're trying. They want to leverage their scale. And they want to bring their scale to the table and they want to kind of maximize their margin, their revenue by applying the information, the data, and the intelligence and the tools they have in order to achieve that. Right? Publisher, again, it wants to maximize their revenue. So 
my point would be that my point would be that it is you can build your own systems to achieve your own objectives. That's the business that we are in. You know, we, you know, we help our clients to maximize their See, goals and their use cases, no matter what they are, whether it be a yeah. publisher, an advertiser, or an intermediary. That's intriguing. I mean, it's, it's really intriguing. It has major implications, right? If I, if I begin to build things on my own and I start to capture first party data and utilize that, it sort of changes kind of the, the role of the traditional model I've always had of, you know, I wouldn't call it completely outsourcing to maybe a media agency, but to a large extent, you know, believing that, that that part of my marketing strategy is kind of taken care of. And what you're saying is, well, you know, in today's world, you've got tech, you've got data, maybe you should start taking care of that part of the strategy a little more on your own. I mean, what do you think? I think it all plays a role in the kind of greater objective, which is consumer, <laughs> consumer engagement. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> what was I sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about something, I'm not sure what. Consumer you're talking about that's, 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 right, that's what it was. It was like canceling my engagement. Yeah, uh, yeah but I, mean, they, I think consumer engagement is the, is the way forward, right? And how all these things inter interlock is all consumer. Uh, yeah, 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 I, I yeah. absolutely, t totally agree. We've got to, uh, we've, we've got to be engaged. Uh, ad tech, ad tech, ad tech, data, ad tech. Doctor, doctor, doctor. Hey, just get it, guys. Go. A second. Excuse me. What is that you ordered? This one. Yes. Oh, it's chocolate. It's a chocolate. very typical drink from here. You should give it a try. Really? Yeah. It's good. Yeah, really oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, yeah, around, chocolate, yeah, yes? Yeah. All right, well, hey, if we're going to sit here and chat, we might as well have something. It just became the best conference, though. <laughs> hey, you know, we try, we try. All right, where were we? Uh, engagement, ad tech, ad tech, ad tech. Okay, so, so ad tech, Joe's ad tech, Quantcast uh, is data. I, I, what, how do I think about going forward, the role I play with with my agency, the role my agency plays with me in helping to bring this together, or do they still play the same role? I think a different kind of agency will have to play a role. Um, the thing about ad tech is it's much harder to implement than is ever told to you as a client, and that would be the thing that I would tell you since you're not my client, honestly, <laughs> that you know, when, you, when you sign up for a $7 million deal with Adobe, uh, you're going to be responsible for the systems integration of your deal. And I think the agencies that have to evolve to drive to make things interoperable and neutral. And that's our role in the future needs to be, you know, how do we make Google and Facebook work together? How do we, you know, educate clients on, if you're gonna do your how own thing, you gotta Google? make sure you're gonna be able to have enough reach to make it work. Does that um, put you in a position of systems integrator? Oh. I think a lot more, uh, probably a lot more on the systems integration front and then the data modeling and audience creation front. I think we have to evolve to show different types of value. Yeah, and that definitely sounds a little different than what we've come to expect, yeah? Yeah, and I think that, you know, if you think about programmatic, which has a, it's a dual-edged sword right now, programmatic happened at the same time as procurement. <laughs> and, um, you know, and it, but, it, you know, if, if we find like-minded clients that don't want to race to the bottom of the lowest CPM but want to create a cool audience that we might have to pay more for. So, wait, you informed. think that your clients really want to race to the bottom of the CPM barrel? Is that what you think that's think all our, we want? I think a lot of the clients have become schizophrenic because we have our marketing clients not... Not at, at I'm the, not at your the, client. At the, You've already cool. established that. <laughs> let me, yeah, yeah, let me insult you then a little more. No, <laughs> if you look at the, 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 you know, the zeitgeist of a brand, you've got procurement on one side and you've got marketers on the other. The marketers want to deliver great, cool, new stuff that drives the business forward. Procurement just wants the lowest rate and they've commoditized media and commoditized a lot of marketing, which this whole conference has been about, you know, how do we aspire to do more great things with data and not just race to the lowest CPM. So like, do you feel that? Do you feel like it's just you've been pressured into the lowest CPM? There's um, the roots of RTB as the beginning of programmatic did did cause for many of our organizations this idea that it was the race to the bottom. It was the lower CPM. The, managing those expectations. You know, you you ask about building your own technology. I know there's things as a publisher that I cannot build on my own. But the more I can do deals with you one-to-one -one programmatically, that's that, that blurred line. I'd rather be 
I'd be, rather be making differentiations between a guaranteed deal and non-guaranteed deal than programmatic versus direct. And whether that's directly with you or through one of these intermediaries, it, it really doesn't matter. I mean, there is a catch though. You know, if this glass was a dollar of your spend, yeah. that's about how much I get though well, with know, all these speaking DMPs. Speaking of that, I mean, <laughs> excuse me again. Yeah. He poured our drinks, but it's so small. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Should it be more than this? No. We're from America. We're not used <laughs> to <it. laughs> uh, The tradition says that you need to go from bar to bar. So if they pour you a big amount of it, by the third bar, you're rotten. So <laughs> <laughs> this is not America. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. So I understand. So pace yourself and take our time is the idea here. Exactly. Ah, okay. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Didn't take into account where you started the day, I guess, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> the curtain was down. Well, the curtain was down, see, back to lack of transparency. That's it. Right? That's lack it. of transparency. I, you know, I don't know. Is it about driving to the bottom of the barrel? Is it about taking the efficiencies, you know, building efficiencies into the marketplace? And that's what real time bidding was trying to do. You know, we can go on about that probably all day. Uh, you know, the trading desk came in to try to to try to help uh, you know bring this all together. I guess, but I, I don't know. Some trading desks are already going away. Is there what's what's the role of a trading desk? I, as a brand, we've never really fully grasped. I think uh, you know, what what do I do with the trading desk versus my agency versus uh, a DMP DSP type provider? I, what do I what how do I think about that? Any well, perspectives? Yeah, you I, mean, used to I, used be there, to, right? I used to work at a trading desk. <laughs> right. And now oh, okay. you've kind of completely gone to the technology side. And the, the role of the trading desk at one point, and I think I said this pretty openly about like, five years ago, wow, building one, was that it was to buy time. Right? It was to buy time to build expertise. Right? And uh, we're kind of at the point now that, you know, you, as you say, some are going away, some still exist. Yeah. And they've all been able to, the ones that still exist, have been able to transition. You know, transition their business in order so that they were doing something else you know, besides just buying time. So they're adding value in some yeah, and, way. And even with my, you know, earlier when I said that you just build it, right? Just yeah. kind of like if you're a brand, you're a publisher, you're an uh, internet, you know, you're an uh, intermediary, you're a trading, just, you know, just you can build the technology, you know, it's, um, you can build the technology to fit your specific use case. Yeah. <clears throat> now, the role, if you think of the trading desks and the agencies that are still out there, there's still a role for expertise. Right? There's just because you know, someone like App1 exists and can build it, right? we, you still need to design what needs to be built. And the experts are there. And those experts have gravitated you know, largely to the experience. They've gravitated into a lot of the trading desks and the agencies, some to brands. But they're, know, so they're still reliant on that, them. I, mean, I, I love that point. Yeah. Um, I, I think that it's, the point's been made a little bit throughout this conference, I, I, and I 100% agree, is it's all about people. At the end of the day, yeah. what we found is who I want to work with is, is largely based on the on people, and you know now you're lo we're looking across the landscape at where are the people, the people with the expertise and the understanding of how to bring this together, and you know Joe, Joe, I'm interested. Like you look at what's happening with some of the the marketing data clouds, right? So Oracle going out and, and building what they're building is, I mean that that's kind of it's interesting. Like there's a lot of intellectual capital essentially that comes along with acquisitions like Blue Kai and Data Logics and bringing all that together and that's starting to look kind of like an agency of the future isn't it? It feels like it but there, I, there are inherent limitations in those in those types of setups because there it, in, it inhibits data portability right so for you as a brand or you as an agency the most important thing you have to take advantage of with the kind of this the, this Moore's law of application of, of, of technology development, right? And how all of these DSPs and SSPs and all of these various partners change and develop and evolve. The minute you lock yourself into one of those systems, you've inherently kind of handcuffed yourself to a very specific set of technologies. It's a really good point. And, and the thing is, technology is changing every month. If you look at the curveballs that we've had, over the last couple of years, viewability, brand safety, front. there's something new coming all the time. If you tie yourself into a long-term relationship, you're stuck, and technology is changing very, very fast. You know, I think the trading desks do have a place. You do need speciality in agencies that understand this space, though I think the job will be more about ensuring that the agency is then using the solution at the time that provides the best solution for what the advertiser wants. And they need to be nimble, they need to be quick, and not locked in. Uh, marketplace changes too fast. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Adobe the other day announced that they uh, are launching their DSP at their sales conference. Ultimately, that makes them 
in conflict with Google and Facebook and their bidders, so they lost their neutrality. If you would have gone all oh, in I on the Adobe this. stack. Lost their neutrality. God, you want to lost get me started neutrality. on losing neutrality. I mean. That's me in the corner losing my neutrality. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's me. It's not bad. Topical Michael Stein. Well done. Well Baldness. done. I, you know, where is neutrality going to exist in the new world? That's a great question. I, now, it seems like, again, every conversation I'm having with a buy side property is about, well, we'll give you measures, but it's our measures. We'll measure it ourselves. I, what's happening? I mean, God you, you is, can't, is... You can't go off someone's own measures. Again, and I, I keep, I've been talking about attribution for like the last two years. You have to have an independent attribution system that allows you to, allows you to be the judge of what channel's working best or worse. Either the trading desk runs it, the agency runs it, or you run it. Whichever way, you need something that's not part of the solutions you're using to invest money into drive. Oh, well, boxes. I agree completely. I mean, again, as one, someone who wants to ensure the, the, the working uh, the value of every dollar I put out there, I absolutely want an independent way to measure that and understand how well it's working. Unfortunately, I mean, there's some pretty big properties out there that are just not going along with the flow. Like, how do we, how, how do we get there? It's your money. You know? <laughs> Glad you said that. That's At right. the end of the day, it's your money. And, Glad you said that. And you know, that's what talks. Um, and 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 also, it's that you know. And this is where I think that the agencies have to evolve into the role is understanding how to hack those systems to get you what you need um, out of it, and how to make it interoperable by using. And this is where I think clout still comes in. Yeah. It's you use your clout for engineering leverage with the big providers and to break some of the rules of how they're operating. Um, yeah. That's, that is the use of clout in the, in the next era. Because, I mean, I, I, like I said, I mean, ad tech, mumbo jumbo, mumbo jumbo, mumbo jumbo. It's, it's just every day, something new, something more. I, I feel like at the end of the day, somehow I'm getting screwed. Well, it's not you getting screwed. How am I getting really, screwed? Mike, it's Mike um, getting it's, screwed it's, more than anything. Mike's getting down, screwed? Yeah. You know, like, again, it, it, it flows it, downhill. It, bring, it brings it back. We've, we've heard today first party data, second party data, third party data, clouds. It's like, who cares? Are you serving the ad to the right audience? Right. And it comes back to this every single time. It's advertising. Let's remember that. And we know how to measure advertising. We know how to re measure response. It ain't last ad seen. It isn't click. It's either audience composition or, again, we've got some wonderful attribution tools to use that, that can understand this. It's advertising, folks. You know, forget all the technology jargon. Yeah, Aaron, to, to, to you, I mean, you're, you're the advertiser, right? If, if you could have it your way, if you, could have it, if you could have it your way, what would you buy? Like, would you what would buy, I buy? Would, would you, would you buy performance, and what would be the definition of that? Because I think that it goes Which hand in hand with what this attribution is. Whoa. <laughs> We've gone from movie quotes <laughs> to right. music now to television. You're, you're hitting it all. That's pretty good, man. It's like we're in a bar. It's kind of like we're in a bar. <laughs> Like, what, what's attribution mean to you? Go what does attribution what mean to me? Yeah, I mean, obviously, for a, for a brand, yeah. we, we've got to drive sales. We have to drive uh, people to the store shelf and taking things, taking my product off the shelf. Is that right? how you so, buy media today? Is that how we buy media? Yeah. Of, of course, not exactly. Right? There's no um, perfect system for saying I buy this media. Something you know, you go and buy my cereal. Mm -hmm. I wish there were. There's, there's not, there's not a perfect attribution system for that today. It's a major challenge for a, an offline marketer, if you will, or a marketer who sells primarily offline. It's a major challenge, and uh, you know, how do we overcome that? And you know, what do I care about online attribution if it doesn't actually take me to the last step of who bought and why they buy? Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a major challenge. And again, so then I don't know. Where am I actually getting the most out of my dollars? Uh, and then uh, let's go back to trans full transparency and viewability and two seconds of a video being considered viewable. What, what good does that do me? Does it do me any good? I, I, I don't know. But, but it, it, we're going to go through this period of evolving through that. And guess what? It's digital. We're going to have another set of issues that come up right after that. So, you know, as, as, the, as the seller, um, I can't make a prejudgment on if you should buy directly through me, go through an agency, go through an agency, then a trading desk, build your own DMP, DSP. I have an SSP, a DMP. We're Here on we PCP go. and exactly. LSD. There we so, go. So, so I just got screwed four times, and I'm right. not sure which four. And, and, I, <laughs> and now you have a drug yeah. problem. Now, <laughs> but, but, you, but, the, but the more that, that, that you are dictating spend coming to me directly in a, in a programmatic fashion, ah, the, so less, I, the less I'm on right. now the heroin. All right, so I should drug, start talking to you. The heroin of the open market. 
Because the heroin of the open market is what, is what you know no, what, it tastes about like as good as this. You know? Good taste. Yeah, this is good, by the way. Well, that revenue tastes just as good, but that hangover when that bad ad comes in. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, so you're, to Mike, you're talking about a scenario, right, where essentially Aaron has to spend less and you reap higher margin, right? And that's, I, it would be lovely. And, uh, and it's not, but but it's you know what? It's undoing. okay as long as... Long as uh, I heard you know spend what? less. Yeah. Uh, I I'm, I'm okay after if he's spend spending less. more, though, with more... Like I said, I, per, I need to be nimble based. between the intermediaries, and I need to optimize based on my net after... Right. If he has five toll collectors, but one of his competitors is three, I can be blind to that. I need to solve marketer problems by adjusting to those different worlds. So I can't, I can't set up a stack that's closed out to any of them, at least not today. And like I said, the dollars taste just as you good. You know what? I don't know if I even have the right people to understand all that. I think let's go back to every acronym you just said. and the, you know, Strategically, it all makes a lot of sense what you guys are saying, but... My God, I mean, we're a hundred and some year old marketer. I don't know that we have the right people. Uh, I think the, the, the dude from Unilever, he was talking about, we didn't even use Excel spreadsheets, some of our leadership. So I, do, do you think I need to hire that talent? Or does my agency, who I know I'm not your client, but I'm going to look at you <laughs> as, as a representative here. Like, across the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it sit there? Does it sit with you? I, I, you know, where, where do I need this? Well, let's see, LinkedIn told us all these skills that data scientists have, right? Like, so somewhere I need those skills to exist in order to, to kind of succeed, I think, in this new, new world of media. But where do those skills need to exist? Me? You? You? It shouldn't be me. Not you. It shouldn't be me because <laughs> right, we'll what that. you need in the so next, I can't do it. Organization like that to understand this landscape and address it properly. Without gonna, any doubt. To, you're not going to be able to no. grow them, maintain them, care for them, water them, give them a career path because you're not going to have them at scale. You don't think I, as an advertiser, can have them at scale? I think it lends itself to a larger issue, though, is where does the, where does the problem start and who crafts your data strategy? I would argue that you need you're, you're, you have an intimacy and an esoteric relationship with your brands that even the agency doesn't bring. Right? I, so, I do. I do. So it's it, true. If, if you're going to own this, and you know, the programmatic piece is a component of a much larger execution, right? Which I was saying before I was so wonderfully interrupted that uh, you know that the, it's all about consumer engagement, right? This should be a piece of a much larger jigsaw of which you dictate and mandate, which I know you in particular do dictate. So I, there's, there's, there's something there. Um, but I, I think it's different organizations that are going to require different levels of maintenance. Aaron, you or your agency need to know what you want. Right? Do you we need to know what we're you buying? You define that. You need to know what you want. Oh, what we want. What you want. Right? I can tell you what I want. Okay. So if you, if you come through and you define what you want, there are companies out right there. Right now we want another Up yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People, you, you can build towards that goal. Right, and it's like most, a lot of brands don't have the expertise to really understand what they right. want. I think it's you're like, right. How do you define what you want into the data trail that is the, the world that we play in? And yeah. how do you define it and what is the kind of like the advanced, you know, what, what are you optimizing towards? As you, you can have the people that can define that, you can get what you want. Yeah, you know, I think I have to define that, right? If I don't yeah. define what I want and what success looks like, I have no right to ask that of any of my partners downstream, really. At the end of the day, it's my money. You yeah. said it, and if I don't protect my money, who will, yeah. to be quite no. honest? It, but it seems to be that, that question that seems very simple. What does the advertiser want? It doesn't, um, it doesn't penetrate ad tech. It's, a, it's a something that's kind well, of, and so it changes a lot. I think, you can find, I think you can find individuals at an advertiser who can tell you what they want. Yeah. Do you have an individual who can translate that? into yeah. how will that be achieved, right? And yeah. that maybe yeah. that's your point. Yeah. Is how, how, do you, how do you take the, the corporate objective and what do you want and, and translate it into an action plan? That's it. That is just amazing, by the way. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. Thank you. Well, not just, yeah, to, 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 to an objective, but then who do I partner with? I mean, my God, how many people have we heard from in the last two days? How many players are there in this space? Uh, and and you know, how do I make that decision? My point was that you know what you want. You, you make a decision that you want to integrate Crux, you want to use Analect, you want to buy in the New York Times. Well, our job as a company is to help you build towards that goal. Right? And so kind of like to build the technology that helps achieve that goal where we don't care if you integrate Crux or you know, kind of some other DMP. We don't really care if you buy from the New York Times. We don't care if you use Intellect. You just build it according to your objectives. Yeah. But you just need to have the experts 
you need to assemble the experts that can define that and create the trail. And then it can be built. So what I'm hearing is there are options in how I think about this model, but the options have implications then of, for moving forward in terms of where I source talent, place talent, the technologies I buy into, the data that I'm going to need and find necessary. Uh, so, I mean, it sounds like I know there's other brands. I've talked to some of my counterparts and other big brands. I mean, they're going all in-house. In-house. It's the biggest buzz right now from a brand perspective. Bring it all in-house. What the hell does that I mean, even mean? Well, I mean, it's funny because, you know, a while ago we said some trade and desk started. They took it in-house, and now they're, now they're breaking up. I wonder if the same thing will happen. If the same thing will happen? To the client as well. Okay, so if they, they bring things in-house. Well, I think fairly public. Anheuser-Busch, yeah, I think they yeah. had an internal, and now it's, it's back out, yeah? yeah? Is that your point? It's yeah. Kind of like, yeah. yeah, it's about the talent and the experts. It's about being flexible. I, I do think you need someone in your organization that is technically minded. Like, you may as well just give the Unilever guy a call and just ask him, right? Give the Unilever guy a call? <laughs> he seemed pretty damn smart, I will say that. He really seemed pretty smart. And he can uh, just flash his phone, and we can just call him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he wants to drink. Maybe a call right now. So you do need someone like that because, again, you need to be flexible. There's no point entering long-term relationships with all the different things that are changing so quickly. And you want to pay for people who are providing best results. Well, but, okay, let me point counterpoint here. You said okay. there's no point in entering long-term relationships with how quickly things change. I, I, I hear that, and I definitely uh, on board with the pace of change and, and what the implications are. I will say that we found... One of the most keys to success for us has been, I'm looking for partners, not vendors. So I do right. look for someone who I can, I can partner up with, and over time we build things together. And if it's not perfect at first, then we know that we'll get through it, and, and they're, we both okay. have a commitment. Let, let me, let me, let me uh, build on that. So you send out an RFP, you have five people present with an RFP, they're talking about first party, third party cloud data, you sign up for one, you start running some campaigns, you realize each, this isn't working. Stuck. Right. The other way of going out, you test a number of vendors, you think you work, I'm gonna carry on, I'm gonna build a partnership with you and carry on, and I'm gonna introduce other people. It could be a long-term relationship. <laughs> What's Kaisha? Kaisho is hello? Yeah, in Basque. Oh, in Basque? Yeah, Kaisho. Doesn't sound Spanish. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Kaisho. Kaisho. Said that right? Okay, yeah. Kaisho. Thank you. Thank no you. problem. Yeah. Um, so I, I, think, I think I agree. I think I agree with you. So I hire Quantcast to, to provide me some data, and I realize it's not working, and I get rid of you? Done. Oh. <laughs> the thing is, you, you hire someone, you work with them, you realize they provide good results. Muy bien. Muy, muy bien. Sí, muy bien. Tu qué tal? What? Why did he do that? That was so rude. No. <laughs> What's this? What's, what's it's this? It's polite. It's okay. Actually, the bars that more napkins have on the floor are the most popular ones, so go ahead. So, in a pincho bar, yeah. you finish, yeah. you throw the napkin on the floor. Of course. Ah. It's a way to do it. It's polite. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. <laughs> That's bravo, hey, bravo. Yeah, we can get a bravo. drink up here. We can, oh, wait. Yeah, we can do That's that too. my friend, Joe Bravo. <laughs> we can drink row. up here. Well, that was interesting. Yeah. Lousy, yeah. but interesting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> different, you know. You know, so, but, I wonder if he's ever going to succeed in even talking to these girls or if we're going to get back to some real information. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know if they got any real information. Well, Just opinions. I guess we'll have to see. Just opinions. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> They've gone. All right. So it's interesting. We, we come from, from some very different points of view and uh, kind of points in the ecosystem. Yeah. But I, but I hear some, some common kind of themes, I think, if, if we think about it. First of all, flexibility. Everyone agrees, right? We've got to be flexible. Yes. Yeah? yeah? So, okay, well, you tell me. What, what are agencies today doing to ensure that they're going to remain flexible and viable into the future? Yoga. Man. Uh, <laughs> no, we're not, Look, we, we're, from my point of view, one of the things we're doing is subsidizing a DMP for all of our clients. Subsidizing a DMP. We paid for a DMP for all of our clients. Mm, free. Did you hear that? How, and do, how do we get that? How do, you, how do we get a subsidy? 
You get a subsidy? <laughs> well, you the government? <laughs> well, you fill out a form <laughs> in triplicate. RP. No, so, but at the same time, some of the clients have procured their own, you know, gone a different direction. We still manage it. We still help them out with it. We still help them with what they want to achieve, and that's flexibility. Um, so, if I subsidize the DMP through, through you, through the agency, though, do I, do I own the data or do you own the data? Who owns the data at that point? We both own the data. No. Oh. <laughs> if I were in your oh, position, I'd subsidize it. Slippery that. slope. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, we're in purgatory, so. Uh, I forgot. We yeah. are in purgatory. The, the, way we, the way we approach it is this. We pool all the reach data on a cross-client basis so that we can see the entirety of the internet every day to make smart decisions about how we advertise. But any performance stuff, clicks, any custom targets, all that is the property of the client. And all the stuff that comes out of the campaigns, campaign activity is yours. So pooled reach, you know, by and large, the clients are fine with pooling all their reach because it makes their marketing more efficient. So when you do that, can you help me find, here's, what, here's one thing I want. I know, you know, I said earlier today, I've got to basically sell my product to most of the people in the world. We've had a long-running joke. How do, you do, how do you segment cereal buyers? Well, who has a mouth? And there's your cereal buyers. So in doing that, I've got to reach a really large audience. Can you, if you own that DMP and you own that data strategy, can you help me find incremental audience? And that's why I would say not doing a DNP on your own is a smart thing unless, well, you're, you're a giant advertiser, but because you only build up the reach that you've seen in the past. And so if you see the entirety of the internet, and then what you do huh. is you, you take... I don't know. Take, is there an advantage of a DMP, though? Uh, well, if I, would, I, if I was in Analyx position, that's exactly what I would do, right? I would go out and I would subsidize a DMP because otherwise you're moving yourself further and further away from the kind of a strategic engagement with your client, right? I, you know, I mentioned systems Smart integrators leaders. before because the, the role of the agency is changing dramatically with the incumbent technologies. And so, you know, as, as you as an agency want to service your clients more, you have to get more, more facile with the technology landscape because you want to stay relevant to that conversation. And a further extension of that certainly is, well, you know what, I'm not only going to source a DMP for you, but I'm also going to help you manage your data. Doesn't that sound wonderful? My sense of that would be... It does. Uh, <laughs> my sense of that would be you're sacrificing the very thing that makes your company unique and that super valuable data asset, right? It's the thing that should be proprietary to you. And you should drive it and you should structure it and you should make sure that churn and lifetime value and all of that discrete segmentation stuff is owned and executed by you because no one understands your brand better than you do. I get the reach play, I do, but instead of going this direction, you can find reach by partnering with guys like Mike, right? And you can say, well, you know what, man? Well, that's what I was gonna ask Mike. Let's go out he and get that exactly conversation. Exactly what I was gonna ask. Would you rather me come work directly with you, or would you rather just, here, here's my agency's card, talk to them. I think each, each player we pull out of the, the middle of the stream, that's, that, it, again, if it's deemed unnecessary, makes sense to, to cut out, but, you know, it is. It's about finding the audience that works for you on our property, and that could change campaign by campaign. So I advocate whether the data is coming through your agency, it's coming through directly through your DMP. I'm just totally advocating what I love about the programmatic world, that we could still work directly under the same terms we worked on for years, but you can bring your own data. You don't need to match with me. We don't need 10 lawyers in a room for four months trying to figure out privacy issues. You know your data. You bring it along. And guess what? If it's not a match, you throw the impression back to me, and I fill it somewhere else. So certain campaigns, there's less risk. So certain campaigns, we're going to hit and we're going to overlap and you're just going to continue to spend on my site. But where you have a product that, or, or, a, or a need that just isn't the folks on my site at that time, sure. it's okay. You go somewhere else, just come back. We're a good partner. Yeah, I mean, it's like the build. I can't see you. I heard Fox in the Hen House from somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, Aaron, are you concerned? Are you, it's something that we've been uh, that we've been talking about here is: that, Are you concerned about your information, your data, getting out? You just you ask the question: Who owns the data? What, uh, what's the what's the root of that concern? You know, like you how, do about how could I not be concerned if if I believe that data is really a strategic of a strategic value to my organization? Then certainly I would have a concern that it, that it could get out. Yeah. So uh, we we do work with with Joe here, and, yeah. I, and I trust that. <laughs> Given contracts and all, <laughs> I trust that Joe's not selling my data to General Mills uh, or Mondelez. God bless you. I know you're in the audience. 
Uh, you know, so it's certainly, if, if, I've, if I've done the work and I, I have some intellectual property, essentially, that would say, these are highly responsive audiences that I want to talk to, by all means, I don't want my competition having that exact set of data immediately, do I? Uh, no. Right? It just, I'm just wondering, my question was more, is what do you do to prevent that? Today. And you, you answered it because you said contractual. Well, I think that's where it gets provider. into ownership. Right. That's why I asked the question, who owns the data? Well, but I think many, I think many, many entities in the well, organization legally, don't really think about that. Well, you yeah, got to legally it. I agree. It. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to it's think legal about legal control that matters the most. Mm -hmm. Ownership, yes, no, whatever. If you legally control the data, that's fine. Yeah, technically control it. Yeah, well, but it well, depends largely on, yeah. on the business yeah. model right. of, the, of the partner, <laughs> too. Okay. If you have a business model <laughs> partner, or a partner with a specific business model that stands in direct conflict with what you're trying to achieve, i.e., we're taking a piece of media spend, so there's never going to be a, a moment where I actually say, you know what, man, you guys should actually scale back here because it's in my best interest to make sure you continue to spend and you continue to forge ahead. It, there is a, there's a, in the selection process, in your criteria, you need to start evaluating exactly where the revenue comes from for these businesses. So help me, help yeah. me feel better right. here right now because you just, you just said something that sparked a thought for me. I've heard some people talk about brand safety, fraud, and viewability, and, and, and you know, these are pretty, pretty hot topics in the industry right now. And at the end of the day, is, is there any incentive for anyone other than the marketer to really fix those problems? Yes. 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 There is. Yeah, because advertisers, advertisers will use that person more. Ah, so what you're saying is, which is a, a statement we love to use back at Battle Creek headquarters, investment will follow performance, Correct. if I think of it that way, yeah? Correct. So, you know, nefarious players can can go out and, and only hang on for so long in that world until the investment will be pulled, that, that, is your correct. belief? That Which, and and that, the industry is full of investment at the moment. That so. statement, though, is completely in conflict with whether or not they share your data. Oh, say more. Well, I mean, think about okay. it. If, if you are, if you are, <clears throat> if that right there, which is that the the investment is the investment follows the performance, right? Yeah. It is in the incentive of the person that's selling to you to increase their performance to their maximum outcome. Of course. Right? And so, therefore, there's an incentive, well, it's in their to, incentive to, to sharing maximize information. Yield. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like it comes down to there is, there is a, again, this is about, again, we talked about this industry is about managing conflict, right? And that's kind of like my premise here. And there is that conflict. There is, if in, I'll pick on, just say, pick on some big machine learning ad network for a minute, right? It's like their incentive is to, they're selling you on a performance, they're selling you on a CPA or a CPM campaign that, you know, is optimized by, you know, uh, to a CPA, right? Okay. Okay. And maybe you're not using them we'll specifically. We'll okay. But just and so in order to maximize their performance, or so this is true at Google, this is true at you know wherever, is that they have to use that information in order to maximize to use your information, your data on the impressions you win, who clicked, etc. In order to maximize the performance. Yeah. If that holds true, if that exact statement holds true, is that investment will follow performance. There's a perverse incentive in that. There's an incentive to share and use your So data. I think, yeah, I mean, you uncovered a, a fair enough point there, but I think it's in terms of what data is valuable for me to share, what data is valuable for me to own and, and mm -hmm. maintain as my data, correct? Right? Right? So performance data, if Michael's my publisher, it's, in, it's absolutely in my best interest to share my, his performance data per my standards with him. Without, without think, disclosing any personal and identifiable yeah, yeah, yeah. information. Exactly, you know, right? We still, right. we still have a, a reason to try to, to use intermediaries to help us see the, in very safe environments, overlap our users so we, don't, we eliminate the waste. But, but again, you need to give me the leads or your partners. You need to partner with folks who could say, guess what? Your technology section had a real sweet spot for this one campaign. And, and, and let's lower, yeah. you know, I don't need your, uh, exactly. I don't need your, your, your data to do my targeting, but I can, I can narrow to what's working from the users on my side of the data I know. Well, that's a good point. One point for the agency, though, is we, with the DMP, when we decided to try to make everything kind of behave programmatically, we also switched on ad verification, viewability, and fraud detection across everything we do. Oh, outstanding. So... <laughs> We use that, <laughs> no, but we use it as a way to optimize the clients by holistically and go. also to, to try to, you know, fix what's a problem in the industry. Yeah, so we, well, that's fantastic. I love hearing that. Oh, hey, Kaicho. Kaicho. Sitting in the Sara. Pin Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that? 
I had, had no idea. Did, did anyone speak uh, the language? I had no idea. No language. <laughs> Let's, uh, should we throw our napkins in the floor? Is that what we're at now? I think uh, that's time, maybe. Huh? Hey, there you guys. Oh, well, I hey, Grace. I, was, I thought you were stuck here in purgatory. <laughs> on the road. Uh, oh, okay. Tour time? Tour time. Tour time. All right. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to do, do the bow. Like do the bow. There you go. Come on. Stage <laughs> bow. Mikel, Mikel, come here. Everybody, come on. <laughs> come on, everybody. Come on. Come on, everybody. Proper stage bow. Now, Mikel, I have to tell you, he works in a pincho bar called La Vigna that has the best, besides having the best cheesecake in the world, you can see he has the best chocolate aim in the world. And I think he's the finest bartender in all of San Sebastian. That was our, the, the result of our primary research. Thank you. Let's hear it from Miguel. Okay, so seriously, we're breaking now. That's a, it's a wrap and you've got like around 25 minutes to sort of get your stuff together. Please, comfortable walking shoes. You're gonna be walking around town uh, all evening and casual clothes, obviously. We'll see you 7.30 in the Hotel Maria Cristina in the lobby. See you there. <laughs>